It is time then for World Series 1, the Nations Cup, to get underway at standing start here at Monza with Andrew Brooks and Adriano Carazza on the front row. Here is how the grid lines up then. So here is Andrew Brooks and then alongside him is the Brazilian driver. The second row of the grid, that is headed by the Italian Valerio Gallo on home soil here at Monza. Can he turn a good start into a good finish with Lucas Benelli for company alongside him? He'll be, have a big challenge, I'm sure. Angelin Estrosa, the winner from the Manufacturer Series race, heads row three, and he has got Patrick Blazian for company, the Hungarian driver. Next up on the grid, that is Giorgio Mangano. Good fitting inside the top ten. He'll be willing to get away from the clean side of the grid well with Ryota Kokobin alongside him. Just inside the top ten is Adam Tapai, the second of the Hungarian drivers, lining up on the grid. For company, he has Tomayoki Yamanaka. Outside of the top ten is Koke Lopez. Difficult qualifying session for him. Not, though, as difficult as this man here. Takuma Miyazono, our reigning world champion. He lines up P12. Baptiste Beauvoir in 13th position, our EMEA regional champion from last year. He's got Jose Serrano with that penalty, of course, for company. So then, are we ready for World Series 1 to get underway for the Nations Cup? 17 laps ahead of our drivers. What is going to happen when the lights go out? Brooks on the right-hand side, Carazza on the left. We get ready to go racing then here, the Nations Cup for the FIA Gran Turismo Championship. The tension is in the air, the pressure is on these drivers. Let's see what's going to happen down towards the Recifidio chicane for the first time of asking. The revs are rising. Flyover happens. And we go racing then. World Series 1 is underway. Brooks leads the field away from Carazza. They're all going to dart into the slipstream. But look at Valerio Gallo on the right-hand side of your picture, as well as Lucas Vanilli on the left-hand side of your picture. Side-by-side side with Carazza versus Gallo. Down to the first corner. Looks like Brooks has got the whole shot, but it's Carazza on the inside. Here comes Vanelli. They're all concertinaing up into the right-hand. They're going to flick it left. There's definite contact into there. And it looks like Vanelli's going to be hung out to dry on the outside. He is. He goes tumbling down the order. There's a penalty being given there for Carazza, presumably for starting all of that. But he is nearly side by side with Andrew Brooks for the race lead coming through the Curva Grande as they head towards the Della Roggia. Here comes Valerio Gallo. He's got a grandstand view of it. Side by side we go with Carazza versus Brooks on the brakes and Brooks manages to hold on to the lead. I think the two Brazilians came together I think at the uh, the first corner there which is why Benelli is now nowhere to be seen. Meanwhile Gallo right on the back of Carazza has got that one second penalty. He'll have to serve that on the back straight and that'll just plummet him down the order because one second might not seem like much. But look at that train of cars behind. It's like a shot of sharks, lots of sharky boys behind there. You've got to be very careful now as you come up to that penalty zone. Let's see what happens to Carazza. Down he goes, third place and fourth place. Yamanaka as well in the background also got a penalty there. So where is Carazza now? Fifth, sixth? Nearly seventh, I think. He's going to fall behind Benelli just about. Yeah, there we go. He's on the soft tyre as well. That's a real dog's dinner of a way to start. But he's on the soft tyre. You want to be trying to make aim on the sun shines. And unfortunately, he's falling right to the back of the group. Again, we saw something similar happen in the Manufacturer Series. This time it's happened to Carazza and Benelli. And it's their fault there, there, really, so not much I can do about that. Uh, people who have benefited to that, of course, are, is Mangano, who's up to fifth place. Back to the front of the field with Valerio Gallo, who's going to have a toe on Andrew Brooks down the straight. And they're already in an interesting scenario. They've got a little bit of a gap to Patrick Gleiser, and behind there he is, behind uh, Go there. Look, flashing the lights from Valerio, so I'm going to come through, mate. Let's not fight this too much. Let's just work together. And we're probably going to see that now. They're going to be swapping places down the straight very often and just using each other's toe. First, the pit stops as well. Adam Depay and uh, Yamanaka coming in. They're both going for that soft tyre, getting off that hard tyre as soon as possible. Here comes Mangano, here comes Inestrosa, here comes Benelli as well, who's had fancy a bit of a look. Carazzo on the outside, he's going to get the switch back. Oh, there's more contact again at the Retrofilio. The two Brazilians still side by side. Benelli, he's pretty friendly with that gravel trap on the outside of that first chicane, isn't he? Meanwhile, it's Gallo versus Brooks then, who still hold on to the race lead. Paddy Blazan there in third position, not too far adrift either. There's a bit of daylight between themselves and Giorgio Mangano. One and a half seconds it sits. You would expect that to be the case because, of course, the top three drivers are on the soft compound of tyre and if you're new to the FIA GT Championship, the drivers of the Nation's Cup, they have three compounds, the soft, the medium, the hard, the soft are the fastest, the hard are the slowest. They must compete on all three compounds of tyre for a minimum of one lap. So for example, Depay and Yamanaka, 
they were on the hards, they've started on those, they want to get shot of them as soon as possible. Now they're on the softs and now they can go a little bit quicker. Yeah, that's part of the race in here. You've got a one be quick on circuit and to be quick in the pit lane with your strategy. So it's something our drivers have worked out before the race and we'll now hopefully execute now as we go into uh, the end of lap two. Grazza looking to get by Inestrosa on the inside there. Inestrosa not too keen to let him by, so he's fighting it a little bit. Has to give the room, though, coming out of Ascari onto the curb there. That was sliding up a little bit. We'll probably let Benelli through as well. Meanwhile, Patrick Blatt and the Hungarian driver has uh, just... Uh, Homed onto the back of Andrew Brooks in front there. So we come through the parabolica. Great on board shots here from Patrick Blaja. And he's now going to get the double toe going down towards T1. So here we are on board. Great view there of the exhaust of the uh, the RX Vision rotary car as we come down the straight. Patrick Blajan deep in the slipstream of Andrew Brooks, but doesn't seem to be moving out at the moment. Maybe just playing the long game there, Tom. Yeah, let's see what happens there down towards that Retrofilio. Blajan takes a late lunge, but has a look, doesn't quite make a move going into there. Just being sensible, really, at the moment. They've both got a lot to lose at this stage because the field is still relatively close to one another. Look at Carazza, uh, sorry, Carazza, uh, in Estrosa there, in the middle of Carazza and Benelli. He's really, really being hung out to drive. Of course, those two drivers, Carazza and Benelli, on the soft combat of tyre, in Estrosa, clearly struggling with those mediums. It just doesn't have the pace at the moment. That's what happens when you uh, start medium tyre. You, are, you get swamped by people on soft tyres, not much you can do about it. Really, Mangano is the, you know, one of the best positions. Oh, a penalty! Track limit penalty for Valerio Gallo there, so he took a little bit too much curve coming from the second chicane. He's doing these things, you're trying to really maximise everything, but unfortunately what that means for him is he's now going to get that one second penalty, and that isn't getting off the throttle, that is one second of applying the brakes. And around here, I don't have to tell you how terrible that is for your lap time, applying the brakes coming out of a fast corner onto a long stretch like this, you can see, that is the difference. He is just being left behind. Just like that, he goes from the lead to a second behind, second place. It's just about within the slipstream range, which will be the only saving race there for Valerio Gallo. But that is two incidents in two races for the Italian driver. And he was pretty seething, as we saw after the first race. He'll be pretty angry with things so far now. So let's see what's going to happen then further back. Meanwhile, uh, Angel in the Strota there in sixth place with Lucas Benelli. Still for company, of course, Benelli started strongly, but it all went peaked up for him at the first couple of corners. He's on the soft combat of tyre. He needs to make hay on the sunshine to get himself past in Estrosa as we run on board with Brooks to complete lap three. Uh, yeah, Patrick Blagin now, of course, who's in second place. He'll now sort of take the role of, uh, of Chaser. He'll be in the sixth stream now, up to 160 mile an hour. Getting there to 170 mile an hour before you smash your anchors at the end of this straight. Patrick Blagin has got the run there, but just lets off. There's no point. He's not going to make that lunge. What these guys on the soft tyres are focusing on doing is just getting away. They don't want to be fighting everybody. Uh, Yama, sorry, this is now, correct me, Zono, sorry, Yama actually pitted. Let's have a look there, here is Carazza then, side by side he runs with Giorgio Mangano on the medium tyre is Mangano, doesn't really put up much of a fight, no point there really for him because he's just going to lose more than he'll gain. Carazza then sits in P4, bit of daylight in front of him as well, 3.2 seconds to Valerio Gallo for him to try and close that gap down, that'll be nice for him to have a bit of clear air for once in this race, doesn't have to worry too much about it, he just said about his recovery through the field. There there is Valerio Gallo, we saw him with that penalty last time around, he now has got some uh, company in front of him, they're still with Paddy Lajan and still with Andrew Brooks in the front of this race. They go under the old banking, heading in towards the uh, Varianti Ascari once again. Now, the soft tyres, of course, Jimmy, we're used to seeing them try to stretch this stint out for as long as possible, but... We're just going to show you quickly what happened to Gallo. You see really quite far inside there, uh, four wheels inside, which that's why you got the penalty. If you're Valerio Gallo, you're leading the race, you've had this penalty. Do you think about trying something different to overhaul the competition? I mean, not at this point, really, because of the um, the, the toe and the slip strip. Uh, but if you're Gallo, you want to just stay with these guys. You're getting the drive, you're getting pulled along. If you're pitting on your own, it's slower to drive around here on your own than it is with a partner or two partners around here. So he'll basically be dictating his strategy to those in front of him. And one advantage, of course, for these drivers that are in the slipstream, like Patrick Blagan, like Valerio Gallo, fuel saving. It's a really fuel-heavy track because you're constantly on the throttle at 170 miles an hour. Three times, as you said, Jimmy, that you're touching that speed around this circuit. And, well, if you're Patrick Blagan and Valerio Gallo, you're in the pound seat. But if you're Andrew Brooks, he's really going to be hemorrhaging his fuel use. Yeah, so you're gonna, that does come into play, of course, and, uh, especially when there is refueling. Here is Gallo again on board. Second last year in Nations Cup, and he seemed very happy with it, but I bet he would have been a whole lot happier if he went much better. And he's always looked like he can do it. He's that guy, I think he's... Uh, I think he's on for something good this year, if he can continue that momentum from last year. But of course, it all starts here, it all starts here in uh, the round one of our World Series here in the Nations Cup. 
right now, just all over the back of Blajan. But I'd say with Valeria Gallo, his downfall seems to be those little mistakes. We saw it in the Manufacturer Series at Honda, where we spun at 130 half and what was pretty much a sure thing. We saw it here, the penalty as well. So, you know, maybe it's getting rid of those mistakes and then we really have someone who is special here. There are going to be people that are watching this broadcast at the moment, looking down the timing sheet and seeing Takuma Miyazono in 12th place and wondering what on earth has gone wrong for him because you don't go from being a triple world champion to sitting down in 12th position for no reason. What do you think has gone wrong? Maybe too many celebrations after last year. <laughs> <laughs> on the the yeah, on the champagne a bit, isn't he? I don't know. I mean, you can get out of practice pretty really easily in this. And because of how tight the competition is, let's say you become two temps slower, that is then you are then down to like eight. Minutes. That's how tight it is. So being at your peak of your game in GT Sport is one of those things that only you know, a, a, a few people in the world will ever get to. And uh, when you start to sort of waver a bit from your potential, it really shows in these, uh, these competitions. Here we are then on board with Valerio Gallo. Now, I wonder if he's going to have a bit of a uh, lift going down this start finish straight. Oh, you can see Patrick Blagent's going for a move meanwhile on Andrew Brooks, and Gallo's going to join the party. Side by side they go into the breaking zone, into the retafilio. blagent has got the inside line. Gallo says, I'll have a bit of that action. Thank you very much. But he's going to be hung out to dry on the outside there. So, but he gets a good exit, amazingly. So he still runs side by side. Wing mirror to wing mirror then with Andrew Brooks. So Brooks is going to lose two positions in the space of two corners as they go through the right-hander of Curva Grande. So Blagent was the cork in the bottle that started all that off and Brooks now sits in third. Brooks is a little bit too kind there. I, I would have run him out wide. You know, that, that's your circuit, that's your bit of track there. He's barely alongside of that point. Yeah, but yeah, Brooks gave him room and let Gallo sort of get the drive by. But maybe Brooks is a little bit too kind there. Uh, and it has cost him the place. But I think maybe they've gone, well, actually, we're a bit quicker than Andrew Brooks. Let's try and break away. But no, I'm sure they realise as soon as they're out front, they'll be the one punching the hole in the air. And uh, Brooks would be the one thinking, well, I'm a bit, bit, a bit quicker than these guys. Maybe I should try and get by, and then so on and so forth. So we'll see what happens. Certainly will. Down the straight, then out of the second Lesmo, under the old banking, and in towards the Varianti Ascari. We go once again. Now he's Brooks going to try and retaliate here, or is he just going to opt to save a bit of fuel? Look at Blagan, though. Now he's been able to get ahead. Just shows how much he was being held up because he's got nearly a second on Valerio Gallo as it stands. Meanwhile, the battle for fourth place still reigns on between Adriano Carazza, Lucas Benelli, his compatriot, just behind. Bit of a squirrel there through the second half of the Variante Ascari then, and that is going to allow Benelli to close right up onto the back. Angelo Nostroza has got a good view of all the action in front of him with Giorgio Mangano in the middle of the two Brazilians that are squabbling through into the Parabolica we go. And I wonder if Carazza and Benelli are just trying to work together a little bit at the moment on that soft compound of tyre, both on very similar strategies by the looks of things, so let's see how it all plays out between those two. Meanwhile, here we are, looking at Brooks, going down the start finish straight, Gallo in front of him, but a lift off there, he just wants to sit behind him and save that fuel, I think. Yeah, possibly, at this point, or he doesn't want to fight anymore, if you notice the gap between Gallo and Blajan up for a second now, that might not sound like much, but it's starting to get to the point where that, that uh, symmetry might be broken. Carazza's by Man Mangano now. It's going to be a drag race through Curva Grande. Now, Mangano's got the inside here, so they'll have the shorter line towards the chicane, but Carazza will have the overspeed when they come off the corner, so we'll have to see uh, how that looks as they come through here. Mangano's still holding the inside line behind him, and Estroza in the draft as well, so he wants a piece of this. Now, for this midfield battle, really starting to hot up here. Mangano, of course, really is a stand-up. He's the only one here on the medium compound attire, yet he's able to hold off Carazza and in Estroza. Brilliant driving there from Giorgio Mangano, did a very, very good job. And as you said, Jimmy, a completely different strategy on that medium couple of tyres. So clearly those softs are probably getting past their sell by date, you'd imagine, there for Carazza. And that is why Mangano has been uh, able to hold on to that fifth position as it stands for the last couple of corners, because obviously there's such a differentiation in pace between the softs and the mediums normally until they start to fall off that cliff. So. Good work there for Giorgio Mangano, sitting at the top of the medium runners as it stands, having not pitted. All the drivers from first down to seventh uh, have not made any stops yet. I wonder who is going to be the first to blink as it sits with just over nine laps remaining. We'll have to see how that pans out. I'm trying to figure it out myself at the moment, as you can tell by my uh, the sound of the cops whirring. Uh, it takes a little while to wind it up sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was your back. <laughs> that too, mate, that too. Uh, Meanwhile, our first three continue to pull a gap on the rest of the field. 
uh, Lucas Benelli, who uh, I was about to say was the next person to solve, was opted to come into the pit lane, as has Adrian Carazza. Interestingly, though, divergence in the strategy, though, for the two Brazilian guys. One's going onto the hard tyre, Carazza, and Benelli going onto the medium tyres. I really want to talk to you about strategy, actually, there, Jimmy, as well as we're coming towards the mid stages of this race. Meanwhile, let's come back to that in a few minutes' time, because here's a battle with Yamanaka Tapai and on board with Koke Lopez coming down the south of the straight. In the slipstream here is Lopez, the two Brazilians coming into the pit lane. That's really tight with Adriano Carazza. Benelli is just in front of this trio of cars now as they come down in towards the first chicane then. Yamanaka in the middle, Lopez on the inside of Tapai. He's going to be on the outside then, coming out of the first corner. Really close racing between them. But coming back to strategy, Jimmy, let's talk about the hard tyre. What's the advantage of starting on that? Let's say, for example, maybe we're starting at the bottom somewhere and you're just in the draft, you're not really going anywhere. Why not start on the hard tyre, leave it for a bit and see what happens? It's just such a pace differentiation, isn't there, between the three different compounds that that's why they try and get off it as soon as they can. I mean, for example, in our World Tour events, and it's something that I'd really like to see returning to uh, the World Series events in the future, is we have a minimum tyre time. You have to run it for, say, three or five laps or something. And I think that just adds more merit, because otherwise you just see drivers going onto it from one lap to the end. And spoil it as such, but it then comes down to how much fuel they've got. If you've got to take fuel on board, then the gap can increase, and it, you know, can almost spoil what's set to be an exciting last lap. Yeah, de definitely, I'd agree with that. I'm just having a look to see who's been on what tyre. Uh, both Lopez and Mia Zono did three laps in the hard top battle tyre at the start, so maybe working on some sort of alternate strategy, something to keep an eye on, definitely. Speaking of keeping an eye, look at Ina Stroh's there, right up the rear wing of Giorgio Mangano. We just crossed away from him for a few moments, but that was looking very close indeed. There, though, is Lucas Benelli, now the lead Brazilian driver. Ah, oh, the leader comes into the pit lane, speaking of leaders. Uh, that's Patrick Blaja into the uh, pit lane, onto the medium couple of time. Brooks and Gallo, the top of the following game. Likewise, Ina Stroza as well. So all of the top five drivers coming in then. Now, where is Blaja going to emerge? He's not going to take any fuel on board at the moment. He's got 53 litres left, doesn't need to worry too much about that. Onto the medium couple of tyres. Ina Stroza, meanwhile, goes medium to soft. Likewise, uh, does Giorgio Mangano there as well. But the top three emerge from the pit lane in the same order they came in. They're all onto the mediums now. Yeah, you won't be needing any, any fuel in this race, I don't think. I think it's maybe like a mild save during you need to refuel. Um, so it's just gonna be about managing that. So the order stays essentially the same at the front with Blagine, Gallo, Brooks and Benelli. Benelli has actually gained a bit of time back on the lead uh, lead free though. I think it's about a second and a bit back at the moment. So he is catching. Here is Valerio Gallo, of course, on the home turf here. Uh, I've always said, uh, I asked him whether that uh, equates to anything when you're driving on the home turf, even if it is in the simulation. He always says, yes, I always feel like I want to do better here because, well, it's where I'm from, even if it is in the virtual world. Just been having a look at the timing script and two drivers who didn't necessarily qualify for a Pogo Lopez to give them the zone there. have been setting good lap times over the last couple of laps, good sector times, and doing a good job out there on the medium couple of time. They're now sitting in the top ten, which is significantly better than they qualified, and they started their race on the half couple of times. They owe the soft. Yeah, yeah, I was just saying uh, a second ago, they were on the hard tyre for a couple of laps at the start there, so I think when you go into that fast finish, um, of course, round here is not as important. Here is Yamanaka, Coca Lopez and Miyazono running together on the circuit at the moment. And yeah, that is on merit. They're, they're on merit, so they've gained, even now, five positions apiece or so, uh, just running this alternate strategy. Do you reckon they're in cahoots a bit? Because it always seems to be Coco Lopez and Miyazono running these, uh, these different strategies that t seem to be coming good at the moment. Well, we've still got to see the last part of it play out there, but it seems to go the right way. Well, yeah, it looks to be going pretty well there for Lopez and Miyazono. We'll keep a keep close eye on those two, because they could be like the proverbial cat after uh, this at the end of this one. Now, Yamanaka comes into the pit lane and he goes from the softs to the medium couple of tyre. Now that promotes Lopez and Miyazono into some clear air between the two of them on the same strategy, we hasten to add. They've got to change over to the soft tyre before the end of this one. Let's keep an eye on that, see how things develop between them. Meanwhile, at the front, Blaja, now less than half a second of the gap he has between himself and Valerio Gallo. Let's see what's going to happen here between these two because they, they owe the hard compound of tyre. They've got a pit before the end of this race. They'll do that, you'd imagine, right at the very end of this one, down in towards the Delaware okay. if, de if you're Valerio Gallo, what's going through your mind at this particular moment in time? I'm going to pick my moment. It's basically it. I mean, you've, you've still got seven and a half laps left. Pretty much. Good in the last lap as well. So, all we've got to do is wait and wait for your move. You've only got to be in the lead as you cross the line at the end of the race. Right now, it don't matter. Although, try telling that to these guys when they're out there. They'll, they'll be in the lead all the time. But, I mean, Gallo, he has the draft. 
he is there with Blaschke. He's broken away from Brooks as well. This is ideal. This is, you actually want to be behind at Monza going into the last lap. You get the drive and you can slip the up by and have that move made. So I think he's just he's just relaxed. He's trying to keep his mind in the right place, especially after Suzuka as well. We can see we saw how frustrated he was after that. So right now I think no rush. He knows he's got the ability and the skill. Take his time. And Andrew Brooks has fallen back a little bit of his leading duo now as it is between Blajan and Gallo. 1.7 seconds the gap sits between the Italian and the Canadian in the inside the top three. Is that just, do you think, the lack of pace on these tyres, maybe just not comfortable with the car, something on the lines of that? Maybe in that. He may have just made a mistake somewhere, which can happen around here. You have to think of, like, it's 11 corners of that round here, as Gallo goes very widely. He's just trying to stay out the symmetry, I think, so he can stay full throttle and not fall back into Brooks a little bit. Um, but, you know, 11 times 17 is a big number that I can't tell you right now, but you make a mistake on one of those corners, that's it, you're out of that draft and you're all gone. Are you doing the math? I can see your head thinking about it. Yeah. Eleven times seven is hundred and eighty-seven. Yeah. So you get yeah. one, you get one hundred and eighty-seven attempts to do a corner. You get one of them wrong, and you go down the field. That's what it's like at the same. Yeah. Oh goodness me. Who eh? Back to the race. Stop doing mental arithmetic. Look at Coke Lopez and Carazza and going side by side into the red video. Now that's not ideal for Lopez because when you come out of a pit stop, you want to come out in some clear air. Now Lopez, of course, is on the soft compound of the tyre. Likewise, Miyazona, but those two stuck in traffic in the form of Yamanaka for Lopez and Carazza for Miyazono, so that's not ideal at all. Here comes the scent, I reckon. If I were Coca Lopez, I'd be sending this right now. He's sort of half looking to the inside, he's going to go for it as well. I was only joking, Coke. there he goes, sends out the inside of Yamanaka, using that soft tie, using the extra braking potential it gives him, and now he can go after Adam Depay. And bear in mind, aside from Depay, he is the leading person on who has made two stops at this point, so if he can get by Depay, Coca Lopez is in a really good position here. Meanwhile, Valerio Gallo also in a good position there in second place. You can see him just pulling out the slip through. So Blajan and himself working together. It's all well and good and all fair and war at the moment. But come the final lap, if he stays as it is between these two boys, you guarantee that the gloves are going to come off and the elbows are going to come out between them. Let's see what happens there. I really want to cross back to that battle for seventh position as, uh, as well because Adam Tapai is sitting at the forefront there. But Coke Lopez, three tenths of a second adrift of those two boys. You can see there is the battle for fifth place between Mangano and Angel in a both of those drivers on the soft compound of the tyre. Let's see what they're going to do. Is Inestroza going to take another look? They're running into the slipstream. They're on the start finish straight. And Gallo Inestroza with a significant straight line speed advantage thanks to that toe. And O moves over into fifth place even before they're headed to the braking zone for the Reza Media. 107 mile an hour the brakes there. And these things, uh, yeah, it's always mad seeing that sort of speed anywhere. So here he comes, Coca Lopez. And Pai's actually going to defend this, he goes to the inside, so he's going to say, right, if you're going to go by, we're going the long way around, but I think he's got enough over speed to maybe get by Fuller. No, he's not the Hungarian driver. Defends Coca Lopez late on the brake, sweeps in front of Adam Depay, and that is a statement of intent. It's like, right, OK, this is mine now, let's chase after these other guys. And now he's got a free track ahead of him, which is a good and a bad thing, because he's not going to have a toe anymore, but he's not going to be held up by this train behind. Miyazono as well there on the soft compound of tyres, got to do exactly the same thing if he wants to chase after Coca. Okay. This is a shocker for Miyazona because he's got to find his way through Yamanaka and Tapai and then try and close up onto the back of Lopez. It's really costing him very, very dearly here indeed. It could potentially be a battle for the podium, say, for example, if he lost. Potentially, definitely at this point. I mean, we're just trying to work out all the permutations for pit stops at the moment. It's one of the great all, things all the about the commentator. All the boys in front have got to make another pit stop yet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Race, so, so we've got to find out where the Delta is and where they're all going to end up so Gallo again let's see what he does you see the throttle input there yeah lifting lifting on the straight there not bothered about passing right now what he will be doing is monitoring that gap behind to Andrew Brooks which by the way has come down by a few tenths of a second to the point now where Brooks will be back in the draft now Gallo's pulling to the inside here I think just to get a line a, a, sl a slightly quicker line to the line but purpose is staying out of the draft now the only reason I think he's doing that is because one you're not allowed to win the bump draft in these events that's a bit of a no-no found on by our stewards and two maybe just trying to avoid lifting too much down the straight. He wants to stay as close as he can without giving Brooks on this sort of draft, but it's not working. Speaking of Brooks, yeah, he's three tenths of a second faster than Blajan Gallo on that last lap. He's had a personal best on the lap before. 
Meanwhile, we'll come back to them in a few moments' time because here is Miyazono in the slip stream. He needs to dispose of Tomoyuki Yamanaka and Adam Tapai before too long. Yamanaka is going to the slip stream on Adam Tapai. This is going to be a three wide battle down in towards the rest of Finio. Miyazono on the inside, Yamanaka in the middle, Tapai on the outside. Who's going to break latest? It's Miyazono. Whoa, goodness me, that was close into there, wasn't it? But Miyazono gets two places in one corner. Yamanaka also ahead of Tapai. That is about as close as it gets into that first chicane. I loved watching that thought process. So it's right, I can get Adam here. Oh, wait, I can get Yamanaka too. <laughs> boof, boof, and right to the outside and uh, just made that stick. And that is why Takuma Miyazono is one of the most fun drivers to watch. Never lets us down there. Great move by our Triple World Champion. But meanwhile, in front of the field, Blajan Gallo and now Andrew Brooks too. And Gallo, I think, maybe he's had enough at this point. He's starting to have a look at Blajan, not quite going for that move still. Maybe he's still just trying to get out of the draft. I can't for the life of me figure out why you wouldn't just lift instead. Maybe he's trying to get in his mirrors, make him make a mistake, make him try and spin or something. Um, but otherwise, it's just stay with him. So again, look to the inside of lifting again. Maybe he wants Brooks to be part of this. I'm not really sure. I, I can't think of the reason here. My, my, my brain can't get around it. While they're doing this, keep an eye out for Coco Lopez to give me a zone. We said the race would come to them, and Coco Lopez was a 146.387 last time around. Compare that to Blajan, Gallo, and Brooks, who are all around the 147.6, 147.5 markets. They were a second slower than Coco Lopez. And that was the fastest lap of the race by Coco Lopez there. So he's now just set the fastest lap of the race. He's in pursuit of these guys. Gallo now goes to the outside of Patrick Blash. I think he's had enough of waiting. So uh, Valerio Gallo goes up into the lead, but they are still fighting. And that's just to bring Brooks right back into it there. That's a bit of a freebie for Andrew Brooks. That gap now down to four tenths of a second. He's now right back in the fight for the lead. Gallo up into first. Blash in second now to come through Kerber Grande. Three uh, cars at the front there. One Italian, one Hungarian, one Canadian. And Gallo going defensive into the second chicane. Blajan thinking, oh, I might, might have a go at this, and then backs out of it once again. So Gallo there putting down a statement of intent. I think now is that time to go. Now's the time to move. And this is the thing, we're coming into the closing stages. Just to bear in mind, these guys, they still owe a pit stop in this race. And all the while they're squabbling amongst one another, it's allowing Lopez and Miyazono for example, to close that gap down. Lopez has got 1.3 seconds owing to Miyazono being stuck in that train of traffic as it was as we saw a few laps ago. So he is now in a very, very promising position. Let's see what's going to happen then as we're coming towards the closing stages. Is Blajan going to retaliate on Valerio Gallo as they come under the old banking and in towards Ascari? Not quite at the moment, but Gallo is now trying to lead from the front and I think he's going to try and pull the pin if he can, but I just don't think he's got the speed and of course the other two behind have got that slip screen and they can just sit there all day long if they keep it consistent in the corners. Just look at Lopez's sectors, he was nearly a second quicker through the first sector alone. That's only a 35 second sector, so Coco Lopez on a charge right now. He has met some traffic though, so that might hold him up slightly. Uh, now Gallo, Blajan, and Brooks, when are they going to pit? Are they going to really eat this out to the last lap? Are those medium tyres going to go that far? Or are they going to come in early for the hards? In time we'll find out, I'm afraid. Kicking up some dust there. Attempt to line up at least the distance down towards the first corner. Now, will Blajan come back at Gallo? We've got a great spot here on the rear wing. Blajan is gaining in the draft. Gallo sees that he needs to defend, comes across. Blajan there, kind of very hard. He's not really going for it, is he? he kind of just said, well, okay, well, if we're going to take this line, I'm going to just stay here and have a better turn in. But it slows them both up. You see, they're wiggling, trying to get the power down. Those rear, the rear tyres now, uh, a lot of these guys don't run traction control because they say it helps them rotate the car a bit better, but it is starting to, to show. They are starting to have trouble with that rear traction. You see the trio of Benelli, Mangano and Mastroza have really closed up on the last couple of uh, laps as well. Now down to 3.7 seconds. It's, it's, they're going to have to keep a close eye on this because if they start pulling punches with each other, it's not going to be long before Benelli and Mangano start closing up the gap on these boys. And, of course, they still have that final pit stop that they own, which they will make presumably now either the end of this lap or the end of next lap before they go onto the final lap. Just to remind you, they must run each compound of tyre. They must run it for a minimum of one lap here at Monza as well. That's right. Coming in then to the last two and a half laps of this 17-lap race here at Monza. The Temple of Speed right now. It's Valerio Gallo, the Italian, leading the race. From Patrick Blasen, the Hungarian, from Andrew Brooks, the Canadian. This is why I love Nations Cup. Such a diverse uh, talent pool here in Gran Turismo as we come out of Ascari. Then Gallo, I'm sure, has flashbacks of the last race, does not want to repeat himself spinning out towards the end. I just want to have a look at Adriano Carazza. He's standing in 14th place. He must have made a mistake of some description because he's lost 12 positions considering where he qualified. And he's looking like uh, 
his case is about to come up. He looks very cross indeed, so not quite sure what's happened with the Brazilian driver. He now sits 2.7 instead of 6 seconds off the back of Tomioki Abanaka, right at the back of the field. Not a good day at the office then for Adriano Carata. A good day, though, for Gallo and also for Blajan. They're in the slipstream of one another, and here comes Blajan then. Side by side, they run down towards the first chicane. Blajan's late on the brakes. Gallo's got the inside line, however. Does he have the trap position to be able to move it? He's going to squeeze Blajan towards the curb, but Blajan then has the inside line as they flick it left. They run side by side on the curb, and they still continue to run wing mirror to wing mirror as they come in towards the curb. But Grande, now Gallo is going to have the inside line coming through this right hander, which will give him the upper hand. But if Blajan can hold it around the outside, he will then have the upper hand going in towards the Della Roggia. This is fantastically close between these two on the penultimate lap here at Monza. Deep on the brakes we go, and Gallo is able to get the lead. Brooks needs to really get involved in this. He's just, he's watching it. You need to get in there, Andrew, mate. You can't be watching the fight. You've got to be in it. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure why he's not having a go, a go of Blazar and Gallo yet. He's just sitting there. Maybe he's not quite got the tyre to get close enough. Maybe he's waiting or trying to buy this time, but he's running out of time. And just by sitting there, these, he's letting these guys dictate the race. Come on, get in there, mate. <laughs> So down the back straight we go in towards Ascari then. These guys are going to be pitting at the end of this lap, just to remind you. So the top five will come in for their final pit stops on to the hard tyre for their final lap in this race. And that is going to make things very interesting indeed. Coque Lopez has brought the gap down to 12.9 seconds. Mirazono is one and a half seconds adrift of... Lopez in seventh place there as well. So let's see what is going to happen as they come through in towards the Parabolica. Answers on a postcard, please, because your guess will be as good as ours as it stands between there. A little bit of a lock-up for Valerio Gallo on the ragged edge of retardation going through that right-hander and into the pit lane that these drivers will come now for their final stop onto the hard tyre and onto the final lap. And here we are then, Coque Lopez. Let's see what that soft run did for the Spaniard. He comes round the Parabolica. Now, importantly, where is he going to be when our leaders come out of the pit lane? So they're all coming in now for that hard compound Natal. They're going to run that for the last lap of the race. Here's Coque Lopez. He's coming down the pit straight now. He's got the overspeed. 150, 160 mile an hour now. And there are our leaders. He's right on them. Look at the speed that Coque Lopez is carrying down the straight. Is he going to be able to have a move on Andrew Brooks going to the T1? No, he's not. But he's right on the leading three cars now. And he's got a turret vibe. This has gone exactly the right way for Coke. This is brilliant here. So out of the Retifilio we go then. Uh, sorry, out of the Retifilio in towards the Curva Grande and then in towards the Della Roggia on the final lap. It's upper hand for Coke Lopez then. Takuma Miyazono is not too far away, but I don't think he's going to be involved in this battle on the final lap. So is Lopez going to go for a full send down the inside at the Della Roggia? You bet he is. He's going to go late on the brakes down the inside of Andrew Brooks. Lopez side by side. There's contact between them. Brooks runs off the track. He had nowhere to go there. And Lopez down into fourth place, he's not able to get ahead as it stands. Running out of time, Koke, that was a bit sloppy through there, we'll see if the stewards have anything to say about that. But now Koke Lopez, that advantage he had in that last lap has pretty much been minimised. First and second are gone now, he will not catch them. It's going to be a run to the line for the podium. It will be between him and Andrew Brooks, but meanwhile, front of the field is Valero Gallo and Patrick Blajan. Those gloves are off, as you said, those elbows are out, Tom, and here we are, Patrick Blajan looks to the outside. Will he try and go a long way around? Gallo's on the inside, no, Gallo defends. Brilliant driving there from Valerio Gallo, defensive line there from Andrew Brooks as they come into the Ascari chicane there for the final time. Now down in towards Parabolica, it's going to be a drag to the line, surely. You can feel it between the top two of Valerio Gallo and Patrick Blatter. We ride on board still with Coque Lopez, he's got a good view in front. He's going side by side with Andrew Brooks for the final podium positions. Well, you don't know where to look because they're going two by two into the final corner. It's Gallo versus Blatter and then to the line in the Nations Cup World Series. What a fantastic start to the season. And Gallo surely is going to take the win, and this is fantastically close, it's a run to the line, but Gallo wins by six hundredths of a second in the Nations Cup, ahead of Blajan. Coque Lopez does get third, ahead of Andrew Brooks, right in the dying stages of that. What a superlative race we've had in the Nations Cup.